what are significant figures? Significant figures arise because of the instruments that we use. Whenever we take measurements, we're only certain to a certain value. So there's certain rules for significant figures. And more importantly, there are rules. Let me scroll down. There's rules for the calculations. When we do calculations, just be careful with the rounding. Let's do some examples and it'll make a little bit more sense for you. So let's go back to our homework. There's one value in front of the exponential notation part. So that's one sig fig. Imagine there's a decimal and then times 10 raised to the negative four, that means we're gonna divide by 10 four times. And so you would take the decimal and move it over one, two, three, four. Okay, so for standard notation, you'd put a zero here and then put some zeros in here. 0 0.0004. And so this is our standard notation. Now be careful here. Sometimes this, this changes. Um, these are leading zeros. And leaning zeros are not significant, so this remains as one significant figure. Twenty point six percent is the same thing as 0 0.206. Here are the rules for math operations right here. When you add and subtract, you can only report what you're certain of. Now, in this question, we're multiplying and dividing. The answer should contain the same number of signif significant figures as the least precise measurement. In multiplication and dividing, we want to report the fewest significant figures. There are six significant figures, and we're multiplying by a value that has how many? The leading zero is not significant, the captive zero is, so this is three. So this is interesting. When we answer this question, my answer should have three significant figures. And here's my answer. 107.621.404. And this is wrong. You cannot report all those values because when you run your calculation, you're only certain to three significant figures. How do we convert that to three significant figures? we have to use the rules of rounding. So here's how, how we do that. Let me show you. I want to report three sig figs. Here's the first sig fig, 100,000. Here's the second sig fig, the 10,000 place. Now this is a captive zero, so that's significant. And that's a zero, right, for the 10,000s. And then here's our third sig fig, 7,000. So that's three significant figures, 107,000. Here are the rules of rounding. Count your sig figs and then use the next number to round up or just leave it the way it is. So if this number is five or bigger, then we can estimate, we can round up. So you see how this is 600. So we're gonna use that six to round up. Here's my answer. One, 
108,000 is the answer. So imagine that there's a decimal place and we're going to move it over to one, two, three, four, five. And that's how we write exponential or scientific notation. We want one value in front of the decimal place and we'll write the other values after the decimal place, write the other values. And we moved it over one, two, three, four, five times. So we'll write times 10 raised to the positive five. This is the wrong answer. Why is it wrong? Converting from standard notation to scientific notation, we added that decimal, which we didn't add here. By adding that decimal, you've turned those zeros to significant figures and you can't report that. The good thing, this is an easy fix because we, the writers, we can just write how many significant figures. So just ignore that. So this is correct. 1.08 times 10 raised to the five. That's three sig figs. Correct answer, three sig figs. So this one has six sig figs. This one has three sig figs. We can do calculations, but can we show them and can we explain them? So let's start with just a simple, simple example. Let's convert 15.0 uh, miles to kilometers. Now, this is in every chapter one of every chemistry book you're ever going to see. You do a lot of conversion exercises. Why? For this reason, practice showing your work and being able to explain what's going on. So when we say convert, what we want to do is use these conversion ratios, these conversion factors. And one of the things you'll see here is this ratio. There's a, a relationship between kilometers and miles. So what we want to do is use that relationship to convert the unit of miles to kilometers. Here's what I want you to show. 15.0 miles. And we want to use that ratio to convert to kilometers. So when I say use that ratio, this is what I want you to show. Multiply by this ratio, a numerator and denominator. Do the units first. Show them that we're going to convert miles to kilometers. And we want to cancel the unit of miles. Now, when I say cancel, when we say cancel in math, what that means is we want to take miles and divide by miles because something divided by itself, of course, is equal to one. We can ignore that number one. So that's why miles goes in the denominator. I haven't done any math yet. Doing the math, plugging the numbers in, that's the easy part. But I want you to learn how to explain this. Plug in the ratio. One mile is 1.609 kilometers. And 15.0 times 1.609. So look at the answer here. 24.135. When we do these conversions, the rule is we'll always report what we started with. So here, 15.0 is three significant figures. And so we'll report three significant figures. 24, that's two. 0.1, that's three. And then we'll use the next number uh, to round down, right? So three is less than five. So we'll just drop this and write 24.1 km. So that's our 
answer right there. You can pause the video later and, and walk through this. So this is something I did actually with my class yesterday. And so this was the other example. Um, if you convert meters to miles, one of the things you notice is that there is no meter to mile conversion. But if you have a keen eye, you'll notice there's a mile to kilometer, which we just did. And there's also a kilo, whoops, sorry, a kilometer to meters. So there are times where you might have to do an extra step. And so that's what I do right here. I'll convert meters to kilometers, and then I'll convert kilometers to miles. And I'll leave that up here for the video for a few seconds. And you can see how I did that here. Convert meters to kilometers, kilometers to miles. I do it all in one step, right? This is what you want to do. Do it all in one step. And then we get an answer. We start with four sig figs. And so I answer to four sig figs. So let me show you how to do conversions and the proper way to show the units. So I'm going to write 92m over s seconds. But let's worry about the m first. So here's how we're going to do dimensional analysis. Let's take a multiplication symbol, and we want to multiply this by a ratio. A ratio means a, a relationship. We want to convert meters to miles. So let's go to our table and let's see. On the top part, we have our distance conversions. There is no meter to, to uh, mile conversion. So you got to get creative here. What we can do is convert meters to kilometers. That's right here. And then we can continue going on by converting the kilometers to miles. Here's what we're going to do. The ratio will be our kilometers up on top. In the denominator, we're going to put our meters. So right here, you've got your meter. In the denominator, you have another meter. So of course, those cancel. You've got kilometers. Let's convert to miles. Let's cancel kilometers. So that comes down to the denominator. You've got kilometers in the numerator, kilometers in the denominator, and that cancels. So notice. I haven't done any calculations yet, and I've converted my units. So I know that my ratios are correct. And so that's the key here moving forward. And then right here, one mile is equivalent to 1.609. We want to convert the seconds. You got the seconds on top. You see how seconds are, is in the denominator. We put the seconds on top and then the hour on the bottom. Now, this is not given to you in the problem, but I think most people can probably convert seconds to minutes, minutes to hours. Um, in an exam, I'll probably I'll give you this conversion. So this is 60 times 60 is 3600. Look at this number at the beginning. There's two significant figures. So look at this velocity. When we're measuring velocity, according to this problem, we're measuring velocity to two significant figures. So when we answer, we should answer in two significant figures. That's wrong because we want our answer to have two sig figs. Okay, so let's think about that, 205. So 200, and then in the tens place, we've got a zero. Now remember, that's significant, right? If there's a decimal point, okay? That's also a captive zero. Actually, if you look at the rules, that's a captive zero that's in between two numbers, so that's significant. And then the next number, is going to tell us to round up, right? Five and bigger, we round up. 
So right here, this would be 210. No decimal place. That trailing zero is not significant. If you put a decimal, then that becomes significant. Asphalt weighs 254 pounds and it occupies 55.0 liters. What is the density in grams per liter? All right, so the mass, of course, is pounds, 254 pounds, divided by the volume, 55.0 liters. But they want us to answer in units of grams per liter. And so right here, you notice uh, density actually and, and velocity are similar in that there's, there's a relationship between two uh, properties. In this case, notice how the liters is already there. It, the unit we want is liters and we already have. It. So that's fine. We don't have to do anything there. We do have to do the uh, mass conversion. So very similar right here. So 453.6 grams, that's right here, for every one pound. Look at the units. I'm going to stress the units all semester. Look at those units. Pounds cancel. Look at what's left over. Gram per liter. 2,090. And then the four is less than five. So that means we're not going to round up. So this would be 2,090. And this is three sig figs. The first zero is a captive zero, so it is significant. So 209 is significant. Trailing zero without a decimal is not significant. So that's why this is three.